Lawrence had a chef job interview and got the job. Welcome to the Friday Night Curry Club. Welcome to my kitchen. I hope everybody is well. So lovely to have so many of you waiting to watch. Um, happy Friday, everybody. It is the weekend. It's been a long week. Um, if you're feeling like me, then the weekend is very, very welcome. Um, I hope everybody is well. I hope you're all all right. And I just want to say a massive congratulations, Lawrence. You got the job. How exciting. That's a really lovely way to start our Friday Night Curry Club. So congratulations to you. Um, I hope everyone's good. I hope you're all excited. Now this dish seems to have started something because there's a lot of excited people out there. Excited, get it? Um, it seems to be a dish that really um, polarises people. There's those who just think, oh, egg in a curry that sounds disgusting and there's those who are just like oh my goodness wow so we are going to make um an egg curry and for me it's um it's really quite a special dish it's something that i can remember as a kid um my, my mum would cook it and i just thought it was a dish that my mum did i didn't realize it was um, a dish that other people's parents did as well um and it's it it just holds such lovely memories for me and I can remember saying to my mum just put loads more eggs in there because we'd always end up fighting over the eggs at the end and just say no I want another one I want another one um, so it's a really special dish for me and I'm really quite astounded as to how excited people have got about um, the dish so it's really nice to be doing a really fun egg curry with you. Um, I hope everyone's good. I hope you're all um, ready and raring to go. There have been a few questions about should we pre-boil our eggs and not pre-boil our eggs. I haven't. We're going to do it all together like we do every time we do our Friday night curry clubs. We try to do everything all together. I know that can be a little bit tricky when you're at home and you're trying to keep up with things. So um, if you've pre-boiled them, that's absolutely fine too, but I'm just gonna show you how I do it. Um, before we get started, as always, I like to say a very big hello to all you guys. So please do say hello, give me a little shout out, tell me where you're watching from, tell me if you're cooking, tell me if this is the first time that you've joined the Friday Night Curry Club. Um, because I do like to say a big hello and a big welcome to you all. Um, and those of you who are joining, I hope you've got a little drinky just so that you can ease yourself into the weekend. So have we got some hellos to say? We've got say? Ildeko says greetings from Hungary. Hi Ildeko, how you doing? Are you cooking? I don't know if you are, you haven't said so far. Welcome all the way from Hungary. Angeline has said hi, thanks for the tamil chicken Angeline. where I'm from. What's that, sorry? Thanks for the Tamil chicken. Ah, yes, I, I remember seeing your message, so that's where you're from. I hope that, I hope you liked it. I don't know if you cooked it, but um, it was a really lovely dish, and I think everyone, some of the pictures we got from that, that curry dish last week was just amazing. So thank you for sharing those with me. Can you say hello to Araceli, Araceli in Pasadena, Texas? Hello, Araceli or Araceli. I'm sorry if I've said your name wrong. Um, hello, all the way in Texas. Wow, welcome Ooh. and thank you for joining us. It's lovely to have Got you with us. Maureen is in Vancouver, and someone else is in Vancouver. I Hi, Maureen. Maureen in Vancouver. And Marilyn are on and Vancouver And Marilyn, Island. Maureen and Marilyn. Yeah, I don't ah. think they're together. Oh, you're not together. Exactly. But um, lovely names, I like that. Oh, all the way in Vancouver, welcome mm. and thank you for joining me tonight. Got Johnny says namaste to Le Monde from Kent. Namaste Johnny, how you doing? Lovely to have you join We've again. got Jessie in Toronto, first time cooking. Hi Jessie in Toronto, you're cooking. Amazing, don't forget to take pictures as you're going along and of your final dish. I'm very We've excited to see your pictures. Uh, Joni said, I can Hi, see Joni. the Prosecco. I'm with you today, Lawrence is in the hot seat. 
Oh, good. You get to relax then, Joni. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. Lawrence is cooking away, and so God. he should be. <laughs> here. Sequinda from Los Angeles. Hi, Sequinda from Los Angeles. Love it. This time last year, I was in LA. <laughs> oh, at some point, I might be able to get back. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining. God. Lovely to have you. Now is in Chile, Zurich. Now? Yeah. In Zurich. Zurich. Hi, how are you doing? Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to the Friday Night Curry Got Club. Di and Kev in the Black Country. Hi, or... Di. Hi, Kev in the Black Country. Yeah. My hometown, where I'm from. Got... Welcome, lovely to have you join. Maggie is in Ontario. Hi, Maggie. How are you doing? How... Have we got many people cooking today? You need to give me a shout out and let me know if you're cooking. Uh, I think Maggie's cooking. Who else is cooking? Andrew's already cooked. Andrew's already cooked. I've, I've even seen your pictures. So um, we've got someone slightly who's... jumping ahead of the game, but hey, that's fine. Someone said called into work, so I won't be cooking along live. Looking forward to cooking along with the video. By the way, I loved the curry last week. Still working on my rotis. Yay! Rotis take. So I will tell you now. Rotis, brante, Indian breads take a little bit of time. Um, it is about just understanding temperature and and heat and stuff and how you how you roll them out it will take time but you'll get there you just have to keep keep going keep practicing we've got oh barat is in hi kenya. barat in kenya wow welcome lovely to have you join mm. as well got amazing someone is in crete in crete oh we've is it got... nice weather in crete please Hayley is know. cooking hi Hayley. how are you doing you're cooking along today oh, amazing yeah. it's nice to have so got... many of you cooking Stacy saying cheers from Southern California. Hi, Stacy in Southern California. I'm not jealous. And we've got Irving saying greetings from North Miami. Hi, Irving in North Miami. Wow, we've got our US contingent, which we love having you join us. Thank you, everybody. It's absolutely glorious to have so many people join the Friday Night Curry Club. Annie in South Africa. Hi, Annie in South Africa. How are you doing? Welcome, and welcome, welcome. Say hello to Julie. It's her first time cooking. Hello, Julie. Your first time cooking. Okay, don't worry. You'll we'll we'll do it together. It'll be absolutely fine. I'm so amazed that so many of you are cooking. That's lovely to hear. Um, so the way that we do these things, as always, so if this is your first time, please don't panic. Um, just try and give me feedback as we're going through the session. So if you feel like you're falling behind, just shout out and let me know. And then I can sort of slow things down just to help everybody be on the same page at the same place. Um, this one hopefully shouldn't, it, it's not too difficult in terms of um, um, the process and so on. Um, but there are obviously different elements to it and I will talk you through each bit of that. If you get um, stuck or if you um, miss something, just shout out, let me know and I will go over it again. Um, for those of you who don't know or haven't joined before, do have a look at the Harry Gotra range of um, spice kits, which are there all, and they're all about helping you um, create these dishes from scratch by giving you the amount of spices and all of that kind of stuff and if you haven't seen them then just have a look on the website and um, all the information is there and for those of you who are in the UK my new range of sauces my frozen sauces are now available so do check them out I'm really proud of these because they are incredible and those midweek curries when you come home and you think do you know what I can't be bothered to cook this has got everything that um, basically the way that I cook it at home and I've just put it in the tub and frozen it so that you guys can get it. So do have a look at those. They're a lovely, lovely product. Um, okay, so egg curry. All it is in its very basic terms is boiled eggs in a nice spiced tomato masala sauce. There are lots of different ways that you can do it. You could do a korma style sauce and you can put your eggs into that. Um, I'm sticking with the way that my mum used to make it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get our eggs on. And I've got a pan here with cold water in it. And I'm going to pop my eggs into there. Um, ideally, I would normally go for two eggs per person because you sort of think actually one egg might be enough. But if that's all you're having, you'll end up having arguments. So always do at least two eggs and then always put one spare in. Do you ship internationally? Um, we do ship internationally, so all of the um, curry kits um, and um, all of the other sort of merchandise, yep, that, that is all shipped internationally. 
Um, the curry sauces, because they're frozen um, at the moment, aren't shipped um, internationally. But if you can get me a distributor or somebody who's interested in stocking them in your part of the world, then um, I'm sure we can we can do something there. David has said, Hi Harry, watching from the naval town of Gosport. Not cooking tonight, but gonna cook tomorrow. So Hi David! Mature overnight for a visit from our son Kieran on Sunday, who's vegetarian. Ah, okay. Hi David, how are you doing? Um, welcome and thank you for joining me. For those of you who aren't doing eggs, because there are a few of you um, who were a little bit unsure and thought actually I might do one egg and do some other stuff. If you're using the little charlotte potatoes or little new potatoes, the process is exactly the same. Um, so what I would recommend you do is you just wash your potatoes and put them into a pan. The same thing, we're going to boil them, we're going to just let them soften. Um, and then um, if you're doing potatoes, you don't need to put them in cold water, which we will do with the eggs. But if you're doing it with potatoes, you don't need to do that bit. You just drain the water off and then we're going to do the same um, process in terms of sautéing them in those spices um, and then putting them back into that masala to cook through. So if you're doing potatoes, that's fine. You could, it's exactly the same process. If you are doing it with potatoes, you can also, if you wanted to, add some frozen peas into the curry as well. But it really depends on what you want to do. So I've got my eggs on. They've gone into a pan of cold water, which I've now turned on. Make sure they're all submerged in that water. And all we're going to do, this is the way that I um, hard boil my eggs. Um, because there are a lot of questions about this that came through and I've just tweaked the recipe on the website so that it's a little bit more clear because I did, I just put it, the way that I'd written it was just boil your eggs because I just thought oh, everybody knows how to boil an egg. Um, so the way that I do it is I bring my water up to the boil and once it's boiling and vigorously boiling, I'll then turn it off and I'll put the lid on the pan and then you just leave it. <laughs> And what happens is um, if you leave it, depending on how long you leave it for, that's how much your eggs will cook. So if you want them nice and hard boiled, then you leave the lid on for about 10 minutes. If you want them slightly softer in the middle um, and the yolk to stay a little bit soft, it won't be runny as such, but it'll be soft. Um, then about six minutes you leave them in the pan for. So you just do it to whatever suits. If you want them really, really hard boiled so that the yolk is almost flaky, then you leave them in that hot water for about 14 minutes. So does that make sense? Do you put Any a... questions about how to boil an egg, please do shout. Do you put a pinhole in the end of the eggs to stop them cracking? No, I don't. So one of the things that you can do, um, and some people do that, is that they'll put a little bit of vinegar in... Um, in the water which is fine but because you're bringing them up to the boil from cold they're going to very slowly heat up so hopefully they won't crack but because of the way that we're using them even if they do crack it doesn't really matter because they're going to go into that curry so it's it's all good any other questions please please ask i, I forgot to mention actually that this is your opportunity to get the best or the most out of me um, if you've got any questions, please keep them coming, give us a shout out um, and I'll hopefully be able to answer them as we're going along. Did you get a picture? No. We're just, so what I do is as we're going along, we take photos because I will post all of these pictures so you can see that process and it'll, um, those pictures will go on my Facebook and my Instagram um, and you can just see what's Have going you? on. So if you... Um, yeah, it's your sound off. <laughs> Steve is here. Who's that? Steve. Hi, Steve. Which Steve? Wilcox. Hello, Steve. Welcome, Steve. Lovely to have you join as well. Um, I think there was a problem with my sound. Is it okay now? Let me know. Um, okay, so um, my eggs are simmering away at the moment. I'm going to, as I said, bring them up to a nice rolling boil um, and then I'm going to turn them off and put the lid on. And I'm probably going to leave them for 10 minutes so that they are nice and hard boiled. 
Um, and then what I'll do is I'm going to plunge them into cold water. So I've got some cold water here with some ice in there. Um, what you can do is plunge them into cold water or you can just run them under the tap. So just get rid of the hot water and just refill it with um, just cold tap water. And then we're going to crack into them and break them open and um, we're going to do some very nice, exciting, delicious things to them. Debbie said, Debbie is in Oregon. Hi, in where? Oregon. Oregon. Hi, Debbie. How are you doing? She's going to join me. Cook for lunch. Um, Sue reads her eggs and says they come up perfect. Oh, lovely. It's a very, very lovely technique. Oh, apparently we've got. Hang on. We have mic issues. We're just doing some. Right, is that better? Better? Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I Oh, I've just pressed the button again. Oh God. <laughs> Get any trouble with the tech. See? We're live. These kinds of things happen. And you know what? It doesn't matter. Okay. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Everyone happy? Let me know if you are having problems. Is that better? Okay. Right, so whilst my eggs are doing their thing, I'm just going to prep a few other bits. Um, before I do that, I'll just talk you through what I've got going on here. So in terms of my whole spices that I'm using, I'm going to be using some cardamom, green cardamom, these lovely aromatic, delicious things. Um, if you don't like them, and I've said this before, all, what you can do is just break them open take the seeds out and just crush the seeds and use the seeds um, because sometimes when you bite down well not sometimes but when you bite down on cardamom in your dish it's very very floral and it'll just take over your palate and and some people can't stand it some people absolutely hate it um, so what you can do is either take the seeds out crush those use those to get the flavor but you won't get that intensity or um, just count how many you put into the dish and try and count them out before you serve it which is easier said than done. Um, I'm also using cloves. So I call cardamom and cloves brother and sister spice. So usually when you're using one, you tend to use the other. And these spices tend to be used both in savory and um, um, sweet dishes as well. So there's lots of puddings and desserts that we tend to use cloves and cardamom in. And then we've got cassia bark. So this one always stirs up lots of questions. So cassia bark looks like bark it smells very similar to cinnamon so if you can't get cassia bark cinnamon is the next best thing um, cinnamon is slightly different in its flavor it's a little bit hotter um, cardamom ten uh, sorry uh, cassia bark is a little bit sweeter so it's used in those very gentle aromatic dishes and what it does it just sort of releases its aroma into um, the base of the sauce and just sits there and releases its flavor it's lovely but it's one of my favorite spices um, so those are the key spices that are going in we're also going to be using chili powder and turmeric and the chili powder I always use is Kashmiri chili powder which is my chili powder of choice um, these are my spice tins my masala lidabe which again are also available um, from the website so um, and they come with the seven key spices. And if you want me to talk you through those seven key spices, I can do that as well. Um, then I've got some tomatoes. So with the tomatoes, you can either use fresh tomatoes or you can use tinned tomatoes. Um, I've got some tomatoes that need using, so I've got two fresh ones here. But if it feels like the, the masala is a bit dry, I will then add um some tin tomatoes as well these are the spice tins if you and these we do ship internationally as well um i'm also using about four cloves of garlic i think in the recipe i say two but i do like it quite garlicky so i'm going to put in four cloves i've got some ginger and i've got two green chilies which are going in because I like it with a bit of a tip. Andrew said, cassia tastes lovely when you lick off the masala. Oh, I love cassia. I absolutely love. I know exactly what you mean. When it's gone a little bit soft and you can take it off. Gordon. Right, my eggs are boiling. So, can you just take a little photo? Brumwolf is here. Hi, Brumwolf. Lovely to have you join. Welcome. So, I'm going to turn my eggs off. 
and I'm going to pop the lid on and then we're going to give that 10 minutes so it's 38 according to my watch so 48 we're going to then put them into the cold water and stop them cooking any further um, so as I said so I've got two onions which I'm using so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my bits and pieces prepped and ready so that when our eggs are good to go we are in a place where we can start so I'm using my my faithful chopper um, if you haven't got one of these or if you've not seen me use these before it is the best thing you all just fell over oh my God. I just tripped over my own foot um, it is the best thing because it just makes life so much easier in the kitchen as much as I love chopping onions and so on it does it's a huge time saver so I'm using two onions here and that's because they're fairly smallish in size and all I'm doing is just chopping and putting them into my blender to blitz them up and the reason for that is I want it to be quite a nice sort of smooth sauce. I'm going to take my onions to a nice smooth chop. I just move. Okay. And it's that easy. They are so good. I don't know, Andrew Sherman, you were telling me earlier how much you love your chopper. What's in the glass, man? That's what people are saying. So, I've only had a sip. I tripped over my foot, honestly. I've literally had a sip. <laughs> Problem is I haven't had enough. That's what it is. Gosh. Take more water with that gin. <laughs> it's not gin. It's Prosecco. I'm a Prosecco drinker. Um, I don't really do spirits very much. It's not really my bag. Right, so my onions are ready. I'm not going to take the lid off because as soon as I take that lid off, my eyes are going to start crying. So I'm going to get my chilies and um, my other bits ready. If you want it slightly hotter, obviously you can add more chilli. We are going to be putting chilli powder in as well, but the chilli powder that, that I tend to use is fairly mild. So if you want it with a bit more kick, then absolutely put another chilli in. I'm using two because I like, I do like the warmth, I like a bit of chilli, but I also tend to have um, a fresh chilli on the side with an onion salad, so I do sort of add a little bit of heat to it. Right, so that's that, and then I'm going to blitz up my ginger and my garlic in my um, chopper in a minute, once I am happy that that's done. Joni is using wild garlic and wild chives as well as onions and garlic. Wild very garlic. Oh. Very green so it might look a bit different in the picture. It will look different and wild garlic it makes things even more green. Um, it is the season for wild garlic. Wild garlic is lovely. Making pestos and things like that with wild garlic is yummy um, and it work, It does work really well um, in curries as well. So if you were doing something like a mithy chicken use um, wild garlic instead of the mithy or as well as it works really really well um, okay so our base flavors are going to be um, these aromatics which I don't want to put in quite yet until I'm happy that my um, uh, eggs are ready but all I'm going to do is heat a little bit of oil in the pan I'm going to toast my um, spices my whole spices that are going to sit there throughout the whole cooking they're just going to make that oil really nice and aromatic and then we're doing something slightly different with this because we are um we we're almost going to try and roast our eggs but we're going to do them in the pan so once those aromatics have come through we're then going to add um turmeric and chili powder into the oil now when you do that make sure your temperature isn't too high because it will we're adding powder into that oil so it could, there is a potential that it can burn um, so what i would recommend is just make sure you turn your temperature down and let it just sizzle and once it sizzles we're then going to add our um, eggs into there and we're just going to roll them in in those amazing colors and flavors and aromatics were well, those birds eye chilies that you used so the chilies that I've used are, no, they're not bird's eye. These are called finger chilies or rocket chilies. So these are the ones that we tend to use when it comes to Indian cooking. Generally green, um, 
but if you can't get hold of finger chilies or rocket chilies then the best alternative is a, a bird's eye or a thai chili but they are slightly hotter so just just be a little bit mindful um, of that Hello right. from Chandler, Arizona. Hi Chandler in Arizona, welcome. I Lovely to have you join. How I you don't doing? know if the name is Chandler. Oh, sorry. Chandler is the place. The, then sorry. the name on the thing is Jacqueline. Jacqueline, not Chandler. <laughs> sorry. Okay. So I, I, I have no excuses. I apologise. Right. It seems like we're not doing anything at the moment. And that's because we're just waiting for our eggs to um, do their thing. So let me know if you are doing this with potatoes or if you've chosen to do it with a different um, vegetable. That would be really interesting to find out as well. Um, if you are doing it with potatoes, your potatoes may take a little bit longer um, to cook, especially the little Charlotte ones. They can be a little bit, um, stay a little bit harder. So with those, you obviously wouldn't turn it off and put the lid on and leave it. You just let them keep boiling until they are nice and soft, and then we'll just prick them with the fork. So if you're doing it slightly differently, then, you know, with different ingredients, then that's fine. Okay, right. How long have we? Three minutes. What did I say? 38. Okay, so we're good, we're good. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out my um, eggs and I'm going to pop them into this bowl of cold water just to stop them cooking. And then we're going to have the fun. Um, Julie is using potatoes and Teresa is using egg and potatoes. Okay. Can this be made with a protein? Yes, absolutely. You could, uh, if you wanted to, I mean, eggs are a great protein, but if you wanted to, you could just do this with chicken. Um, you could just do a masala and put your chicken in. That's fine. I'm just going to take a quick photo of the eggs. So they're just in, whoops, just in cold water. Just Michael's, to stop that cooking process. Michael said, it's nice that I'm keeping up, there's time for a slurp. Oh, well done, Michael. Right, so can you freeze this curry? Um, can you freeze it? Uh, what I would probably recommend is you make the masala and you freeze the masala. And then when you come to cook it, you just boil some eggs fresh. And then you, when your masala's hot, you just put your eggs in. I think that would be the easiest way to do it. I've, I think freezing eggs sh would be okay. I'm just thinking about when you defrost them, the texture of them. It should be okay, but I think it would be nicer if you put in um, your eggs fresh. We've got a general question from Michael. General question from Michael, yes. Regarding cooking fats. Okay. Are there rules, in air quotes, for using ghee, coconut oil, mustard oil, or just generic oil? Does Indian geography tech play a part? Absolutely, yep. That's, um, that's, hang on a minute. So all I'm doing, just before I answer that question, I'm just breaking the shell of the egg. And this is how I just peel it, just so that it's easy. You just break it all. Can you see yet? Yeah. Can you move the chopper? And then all you do is you just peel it and the shell just comes away really super, super easy. The easiest way to do it um so in terms of your question about oils and cooking with oils absolutely geography plays a massive huge part in that um in that reasoning so in the south of india so if i start again um it's in india you use what is local what's available obviously things are m much more widely available but back in the day coconut oil was used down in the south because that's where they have coconuts mustard oil was used a lot in north indian cooking in bengali cooking um ghee was used in the punjab region again up in the north because that's where they have farmer you know that's where the farms are that's where all the cattle is that's where they have all their cows so it's easy to um, produce so yeah absolutely so it is all about geography but also so for me I will depending on the dish that I'm doing in the region that it sort of comes from that will define which oil I use when I cook 
So with this one, we're just going to use a nice rapeseed oil because that's what we're going to do. But if I was doing a coconut style dish, I would probably use coconut oil in there. Um, so yes, I hope that answers your question. So look, look at these beautiful, see, really easy to peel. So I've done two. Is everybody with me? Are we peeling away? Are we peeling our eggs? I bet most of you have done this already. You just wanted to uh, make me work hard. I love boiled eggs. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so excited about this dish. I absolutely love boiled eggs. And it's something that I don't get to... I don't know, I don't really eat them very often. I don't know why, but I do absolutely love them. So I'm very excited and I hope you are too. Now, once we've peeled them, we are going to very gently with a fork or an, I'll show you two different techniques actually. Julian pre-boiled his eggs for three to four minutes like you... Like it said like in the, yep, said in, yep, in the recipe. recipe. So he's trying to salvage his underboiled eggs by boiling them a bit longer. But, um, they should be fine. I'm sure they'll be fine. Are they, uh, are you saying they're too soft? Yeah. Are they too soft? Um, they sh I'm sure they will be fine because once you put them in there, in the curry, they'll be fine. Don't panic. Are you, are you, are you struggling peeling them? Oh, I've just taken it. already peeled them. Oh, well, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't reboil them. You'll be, honestly, it's fine. Haley's water's just coming to the boil, has used, she said, must have used a massive pan. I'll catch up. It's okay. I will, um, I'm with you, I've just... <laughs> Maggie's said, every time I cook eggs, my dog comes running, he always gets one too. Oh, he's lucky. I can't imagine my cats eating this. I can't imagine my cats liking boiled, boiled eggs. But that's interesting that he likes them. Mm. Okay. So we've got Crystal. Um, Hi, Crystal. In New Zealand. In New Zealand, welcome Crystal, how are you? Can't cook along this time, but we'll definitely cook it, this curry. I did try the railway curry and it was the best. Yay, lovely. Is this your first? It's a, it's a I don't, I, I, I was gonna say, I don't know. remember hearing your name Crystal before. So welcome if this is your first yeah. live attendance. It's lovely to have you join all the way from New Zealand. Tracy hasn't said hello. No, Tracy. she might be busy. Yeah. We usually get um, Tracy from South Australia joining us as well, which is always lovely. Brumwolf um, sometimes put boiled eggs as a garnish on keema. Yes, you can. So uh, boiled eggs, um, also in biryanis and things like that, we tend to use as a bit of a garnish. But yeah. Chop boiled eggs, butter, salt on toast. Mm. See, that sounds delicious to me. I think that's lovely. Right, last one, done. Right, I'm just going to move all these bits away. He's, Julian said you told him three minutes in a reply to a message. I so did, I did say that, but they... Uh, they should be fine. I know you messaged me earlier, didn't you? And I said, yeah, just keep it for three minutes. Are, if you've peeled them and they're good to go, is that okay? Are you happy? T take a photo and send it to me. Um, so this is what we've got in terms of our eggs. And what we're going to do is either with a fork, either with a fork or with a knife, we are just going to, I'll show you two ways of doing it. Anders in Sweden is here. Hi Anders in Sweden, welcome, thank you for joining me. What we're going to do is just prick the outside. So you're not gonna go in too deep because you don't wanna go right through it, but just using that fork, you can just prick all over. And what that will allow is some of the spices and the aromatics that we're going to toast them with to penetrate in. And also when it goes into the sauce and into the masala, 
it will cook through. Sandra says, hello, I'm here. I've been here from the start, but trying to multitask and failing miserably. Hi, Sandra. Don't worry, take your time. We are all good. I've almost fallen over. It's fine. I Did you see my, if you do, you didn't see my social media, but we had a little bit of an accident before we started with smashed eggs all over the floor, which is always good fun. So you can either um, use a fork and just stab your egg. The other thing you can do is just with a knife, just slice it down just very gently. And that will just penetrate or help the spices and the... Okay, so I'm going to do that again to all of them. Make sure that you do all of them. It's very quiet. There we go. So I've done that one. It's quite difficult to show because we're... And then I'm going to use my fork to prick this one. Just changing it up a little bit. Make sure you get rid of any excess shell bits because obviously they're not going to be very nice to bite into. I make my own dog food with chicken, gram pasta and eggs, which they love. I also grind the shells as a source of calcium for them. Oh. Sandra came in when you fell over. <laughs> I'm so pleased you saw me fall over, Sandra. That's amazing. Right, so that one's done. Last one. Is everybody still with me in terms of where we are in your kitchen? Julian, how are you doing with your eggs? I'm really concerned. Hasselback eggs, Andrew said. Hasselback eggs! Ha ah, ha, you're so funny. There we go. So just little slits all the way through. Yum. Okay, so my eggs are there, ready to go. Is that all of them done? Hmm. Yes. Okay. So, we are good to go. Right, so I'm going to pop my pan on. I'm going to put my oil in the pan. And as I said before, this is a bit that you have to work fairly quickly on. So if you're not, um, if you're still doing your eggs, that's fine. Just carry on doing what you're doing. Um, I'm just going to get on and um, get them, start them um, to saute those spices through them. And you can just watch and, and see how you do that. Joni says, very pleased with the yellow colour coordination. <laughs> we also had a pre-cooking accident. Lawrence spilt his wine and broke the glass. Blamed me, of course. Lawrence. Very naughty. Okay. So, a little bit of oil into the pan. And I'm going to add my aromatics. So my cassia is going in, my cloves are going in, and then I'm just going to, with my um, cardamom, I'm just going to crack them and pop them in. And that one. Dominique Morris is here from Windy France. Hi Dominique, how you doing? It's been windy here too. We had um, lots of wind last night. But it's okay now. Now, do you just want to take a photo of the spices toasting away? Now, when you're toasting your whole spices like this, the whole point of doing it is so that you just get them to release their natural oils and their natural aromatics and just flavour that base oil a little bit. So we don't want to burn them. We just want to sauté them very, very gently. The oil needs to be hot-ish so that um, those natural oils come to the surface and you can smell them. So as soon as you can smell them, you know that you are all good. Now, into this, we're going to add about a quarter of a teaspoon of chili powder and a quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric powder. Now, when you do this, be very, very careful because the chili powder can sometimes catch the back of your throat. Um, and it can also burn quite quickly. So you do need to make sure you've got a fair amount of oil in here. So I, it looks like I've got about a tablespoon and a bit in here because what we're going to do is we are going to roast those um, eggs in those spices. So the spices go in. So I'm putting in my chili powder. Now, do you want to take a picture of that? Because it just looks so beautiful as, as the spices go in. Oh, 
so the spices will start to sizzle and they'll start to become really nice and aromatic and I've just turned the temperature down a little bit so just to show you it changes the color of what you've got going on in that pan yeah I really want you to see that so what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to add my eggs into that hot oil. Can you hear that? And we just start to saute the eggs and roast them in the spices. So they will coat and turn that lovely, lovely colour. This is what Julian's eggs are. Uh, it's broken a little bit. I t that's fine. So, don't, Julian, if you are you still listening to me, um, don't don't do this bit. We'll just make your masala, and we can add your eggs directly into the masala, and that will that will be fine. So, don't worry. It's always salvageable. Gordon said, "Oh, yellow. I have money on blue." You have been asking me all week. Do you see yellow eggs, yellow? Get it? <laughs> right, so I'm putting this, I've just turned my temperature a little bit higher because I just want them to, to start to roast a little bit. And I'll show you what they look like. And you should be getting that lovely aromatic coming through. So if you are doing this bit, they'll start to almost go a little bit crispy on the outside. Maggie Burt has spices, so ask how many cloves went in. So I've put in um, four cloves and three cardamom. So yeah, burning your spices at the beginning. Just If you've done that, just start again. Right, I'm going to take... they screaming or singing, I'm not sure which. Yeah, they do. They make like a, almost like a shrill sound when, they're, when you're toasting them. So I'm just going to take them out and then I can show you what they look like. Ideally, try to keep your whole spices in the pan and just remove your eggs. They should look really lovely and almost with a golden kiss to them. So, if you can see, they go, oh, sorry. So, they go all lovely and golden on the outside. Yeah. So, we're just going to leave those and let them do their thing. And then into here, we're going to add our um, chopped up onions and get that sort of marinating. Um, if you've burnt your spice, you're starting again. Don't worry. Just take your time. Just get it done. It's fine. Julian, please don't worry. Your dish will taste amazing. I promise you. Right. The eggs look wolves gold. Wolves gold. Wolves gold. They certainly do. Right. So my onions have gone into my pan and I'm just going to start to saute those. So I've turned my heat up to quite high. We're just going to drive off the moisture that's in there um, and start to cook those off. Now they will automatically pick up the um, the spices that were in the pan so they'll have that nice orangey ready color straight away but if it feels like the um, the eggs have soaked up a lot of that oil you might need to put a little touch more oil in just to help the onions start to um, cook down a little bit so just be a bit mindful you might need to do that right is everybody still with me I know we've had a few little mishaps and a few little issues, but we're okay. We're okay. Isabella said the smell that's coming from my pan is just yum. Funny. Yum, 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 yum. That's what we want. So I'm just going to... Um, Can you show the eggs? Yep. 
Let me show you the eggs. Can you see them? They're almost like a yellowy, reddy, golden colour. Have you taken a photo of these? Because I will, I'll post a picture of them on my Instagram so you can see what they look like. Um, but they do look really lovely. And that's a roasted boiled potato. Who'd have ever thought of such a thing, hey? Roasted boiled potato. A roasted, bo egg. roasted boiled egg, if I said potato. I do need another drink. Right, so I'm putting my garlic into my blender. I've got my um, chilli already chopped up. I'm also going to add my ginger to it. Um, and I'm just going to give it a little rinse. I'm not going to peel it or anything like that. Those of you who've cooked with me for some time now will know that I tend not to. Tend not to do that very often. Roughly chop that up, pop that in there. And then we're going to just give that a blitz. Keep an eye on your onions. Who was the lady that burnt her spices? Have you managed to catch up yet? I can't remember what her name was. Maggie. Maggie, have you managed to catch up with us? Oh, so have you just have you just sautéed your potatoes in the spices and everything? If you have, take a picture. I'd love to see what they look like. If they're nice and golden and beautiful. So I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny, teeny, teeny little bit more oil, just a touch, just to help these cook, and just rid them of that raw. Because of the spices that are in there, it's already looking really colourful and delicious. So, so they already look quite yellowy and like they've cooked, if you can see. There we go. Um, she thinks so. What's that? Maggie, she thinks so. Well done, Maggie. Right. When you're... Um, onions have started to saute a little bit and you've got a little bit of that raw initial raw aromatic and flavor has come away we're going to add our chopped up garlic into here Joni's dad Kevin in Yorkshire's just logged on hi Joni's dad Kevin lovely to have you join again I know you were with us was it last week or the week before I can't remember but welcome Boil, boiled egg curry today. <laughs> Dina said, I love your cooking, you're so sweet. Ah, oh, thank you, Dina. That's very kind of you. You're very sweet too. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to add my blended garlic. Now, if anybody wants me to stop and just do a very quick recap, I'm happy to. Just let me know. Or if you're all still with me, that's, that's, that's even better. So the garlic and ginger is going in we're sauteing that and what we want to do is just get rid of that raw um garlic the acrid garlic um aromatic that you get in there now if you find that your onions and your garlic or anything stick to the pan at this stage a little splash of water just to lift everything off and it will help brown that masala nicely as well Johnny's just put, oh, and Lawrence says to Kevin that he got the job. I announced um, it earlier. Are we leaving the cassia bark in? Yes, so your whole spices stay in the pan. The whole point of your whole spices is that they just sit at the back of that dish, releasing their natural, beautiful aromatics into, into the dish that you're cooking. So they, you put them in at the beginning, because they're whole spices, you put them in at the beginning so that they very slowly um, release their flavours and oils and aromatics into the dish. Um, can you do a quick recap please? Someone's just drawing so a quick recap of everything. Yep. Um, and Maggie's asked how much ginger? So I would say probably about a, a, a three centimetre square piece of ginger. So almost like, yeah, the, the top of your thumb. Not loads, but... Um, the top of your, your thumb, so 
the size of a garlic piece. So about three centimetre piece of garlic, um, ginger, sorry. Okay, so as a very quick recap, before I do that, mine is just catching, if I show you, it's just catching on the bottom of the pan. So I'm gonna add a little splash of water. That will just help lift everything off. So today we're making egg curry which as I explained at the beginning is one of those amazing dishes that I grew up with, real childhood favorite for me. Um, and it's a bit of a weird one. People either love the idea or hate the idea. So what we've done so far is we've boiled our eggs, which we put into a cold pan of water, brought up to the boil, um, and then turned it off and just put the lid on and you let them cook for about it can be anywhere between four and 14 minutes, depending on how soft you want them. Um, I then um, heated up some oil in a pan, added some cassia bark, some cardamom, some cloves, a little bit of turmeric and some chili powder, and then just roasted the eggs, the hard boiled eggs in those spices. So they turn beautiful and golden and, and just soak up that flavor. Before we do that, we just put a little fork prick into each into the whites of the eggs or a little just run our knife through them just so that they um, soak up the oils and the aromatics. And then in our pan, what we've done is added some nice, very, very finely chopped onions, um, some garlic and some ginger has just gone in. And that's the stage that we're at so far. Hayley is still boiling eggs. Hi Hayley, gosh, you're still boiling eggs? She said must have used a rubbish hob. Oh, did your pan not come up to the boil yet? Mm. Have you got a smaller pan that you could put them into if you're using a huge pan? Gosh, that's taken a long time to boil. Um, have you got a kettle? Maybe you could boil some water and add some hot water into there. Lots of ideas or suggestions, goodness me. Do you eat this over basmati rice? So I'm going to have this with rice today, um, yes. Um, you can obviously have it with roti or um, bread if you wanted to, but I'm having, I'm having it with some rice. And I'm probably going to do some cumin rice later on, where I'm just going to saute some cumin seeds and cook my rice in there. Hi to Richard in Germany. Hi Richard in Germany, how are you doing? Welcome, 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 welcome to the Friday Night Curry Club. Lovely to have you join us. Dominique said, this is a dish Hobby's been wanting to do for a long time, so that yeah. will be our next curry. Amazing. And I'm, I'm sure I will see pictures. I, well, I hope I'll see pictures, Dominique, or I'll be very cross. Right. So and I'm using, oh, sorry. Hayley swapped Hob and now so if it's come, if Haley, if your um, eggs have now come to the boil, you then need to turn it off, put the lid on, and just let them. Um... The no, so chili's just here. Chili's going to go in when my tomatoes go in. If you've not got fresh tomatoes, that's fine. Just use tin tomatoes. Once your onions are nice and golden, that's when you need to add your liquid which will be your tomatoes at this. So, because I had some fresh tomatoes that just needed using, I just thought I'll put some of those in. Um, but I have got a tin here, just in case I want to add a little bit more. How many, how many eggs per person will this dish do? So I would always, so I said this at the beginning, I normally um, suggest doing two eggs per person um, and then always add one extra just just to fight over at the end because um, it is a really lovely dish. So definitely two per person. You always think, oh, we'll just do one, but I think two per person and then one extra. And if, hey, if you don't fight over that last day, you can have it for lunch the next day. So, you know, there's lots of benefits to doing a little bit extra. Okay, so my tomatoes are blitzed. And my masala is looking good. So in a minute, I will be adding my tomatoes into here and then I'm gonna to start to add some more aromatics to the masala. How are we doing, guys? Are we all in the same place? 
it sounds a little bit like we're sort of jumping. There's people who are still boiling. There's people that are making their masala. Julian, how are you getting on? Are you doing your masala yet? Are you ready? Andrew used fresh tomatoes. I've thrown the fridge, didn't want to open it in. I, you've got to use what you've got available. If you've got oh, stuff... You're copying me, Harry. Yeah, I am copying you. Andrew, I always copy you. Um, absolutely. You've got to use what's, you know, what needs using. We don't... I don't advocate throwing food in the bin at all, ever. I'm going to... So, actually, let me just show you. So my onions, this is the colour and what my onions are looking like. So some of that, obviously, is the spices that we've put in there. But some of it is, so it's nicely cooked down. And into that now, the tomatoes go in. So my blitzed up tomatoes... Dominique said, I wish I could join you in wine, but I'm an antibiotic. Oh, Dominique. Next time. Well, let's hope that the antibiotics sort you out and you're raring to go next time. Julian salvaged four eggs, so it's back on track again. Oh, Julian, I feel so guilty. I feel like I need to send you some egg curry <laughs> to... Uh... Um, is this a good recipe for diabetics? Um... I mean, a lot of the Indian recipes are quite good for diabetics because you're not putting any additional um, sugars or, um, you know, it's not heavy on potatoes or starchy items. So, absolutely, I, I don't see why it wouldn't be. Joni wanted to ask about the bottles on the fridge. Clearly, they've been opened and must be special if you've kept them. Um... So those are some champagne bottles. So we've got a bottle of Dom Perignon there that was for a birthday. It was from a friend, a very special friend. Um, and the other two bottles are from a champagne house in France, obviously. Um, and they are a company that I'm doing a little bit of work with. So we tried some of their champagne, um, which is just phenomenal. Um, I'll show you. I will show you. So these guys are based in France um, and they've got some, just some beautiful, beautiful champagnes. Um, but yeah, so watch this space. There might be some exciting stuff happening there. But yeah, interesting. I like the way you spy out my kitchen. Okay, so the tomatoes have gone in. I'm now going to add my um, green chilies that were chopped up earlier. So I'm putting two in, like I said. If you wanted to, you could put more in. I have a feeling I'm going to be adding a little bit more in. So the chilli has gone in, and I'm now going to add my spices. So I'm going to put a little bit of chilli powder in there, a teaspoon. And I'm going to add some turmeric in there just a teaspoon as well and I'm going to put some salt in there which we haven't added any in at the moment Steve wants to know what cookbooks are in the kitchen oh there's there I have got cookbooks coming out of my ears so there's all of those I've got a whole shelf over there as well um, so I'm just going to show you what it looks like there you go So the masala is starting to come together. Now, because I've used fresh tomatoes here, there's not as much moisture as there would be if you'd use tinned. So I'm going to add a little splash of water to it just to help break everything down and let it all combine a little bit better. And I'm going to turn it up as well in terms of the temperature because you've just added something cold into the pan with the tomatoes. We need that to come back up to temperature so that it starts to cook through. I'm going to add a little splash more. And that is going to do its thing. Oh, 
Okay, so eggs are boiled and roasted and looking delicious. Masala is starting to come together. Now into this masala, all I've done is put the turmeric and the chili powder. If you wanted to, you can also add a little bit of ground um, um, cumin seeds. Just for, all it will do is it will just give a little bit of warmth to it. And I think that with this dish will work really well. So you can put a little bit in. If you haven't got any to hand, don't worry about it. You don't need to. Um, you can also add mithy or fenugreek to this as well. And that will give a really nice sort of slightly earthy feel to it. So this is fenugreek if you haven't seen it. So that's the herb. So you can add a little bit of that in as well. And when you add it in, you, all you do is you just, between your hands, just crush it up and just break it just to release some. In the other room, he's brought everyone's attention to the cookbook that's on the top of the fridge. Saying, does anyone know who that's by? And they're going, it must be your book, right? No. That's very famous. He's a very, very famous chef. I think he's two Michelin stars. Is that chef? You can't see who it is. Jamie Oliver, maybe? No. Corkman? No. Oh, no. Right. Look at that. Look at that. It smells amazing. What we want to happen here is we want our masala to really nicely, 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 nicely just come together. So ideally, um, you let this cook down, depending on where you are. So because I've used um, tomatoes or dried tomatoes, it's um, it's hasn't got as much liquid in there. If you were using... Um, uh, tin tomatoes it would have a lot more moisture in there so you would what you'd need to do if you're using tin tomatoes is just let it cook down so that that moisture comes away and you end up with a really nice thick paste and that's what um, will intensify that masala and just give it lots and lots of flavor um, if you're using fresh tomatoes you won't have that so we've added a little bit of liquid to it now with this dish I think it's really important that it you you cook it to whatever suits you. Um, when we would have this at home, it would be quite a um, liquidy, saucy dish. So mum would put lots of water in it now at this stage and let that cook down and then put the eggs in and they would just sort of simmer away in that, in that um, juice and that gravy, soak up some of the flavours um, and it would just sit there until we were ready to eat it. Some people prefer it to have a much thicker masala. So um, if you prefer your masala a little bit more thick, that's fine too. But into this now, I'm going to add some water. I'm going to turn the temperature up so that it all starts to just bubble and simmer and just come together a little bit. Johnny's asked how much chilli powder and turmeric did you put in? So I put in a teaspoon of chilli powder and a teaspoon of turmeric into the masala. I put a quarter in when I was doing the, um, when I was roasting the eggs. Maggie said, I don't know if I roasted the egg enough. I fell behind a bit, but everything smells delicious. It's fine. That's fine. Don't worry if you haven't, you know, there's no right or wrong. You're not going to have roasted it too little. Um, it's just something that, you know, you'll cook it this time and you'll think, actually, I'd quite, I'd quite like to do it a little bit more next time. So there's no right or wrong. Don't, please don't ever feel that you're doing things wrong. The fact that you're cooking it and having a go is is all that is important and I promise you it will taste delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna let that come up to a, um, a boil. I've got some coriander here that I'm just going to squidge up and chop up just to finish the dish off. Now, as I said, if you are cooking this with, um, if you want to have rice, um, you can get your rice cooking 
in a minute as well and all you would want to do is just you with this dish you'd want something quite simple so either a plain boiled rice or cumin infused you could put some peas in the rice so something quite simple um, just because there's so much flavor in the masala um, that you're going to be adding to it so that is looking lovely someone said i made a big pot of bir base gravy recipe base gravy yesterday oh i don't yeah the bir method is it's interesting isn't it but i think if you've got stuff in your freezer or you can keep it and you can pull it out as and when you need it which is what my sauces are based on um it's all good okay so when your masala is really lovely and thick and aromatic like it is i'm gonna add a little bit more water We're going to then add our eggs into there. There we go. Because we want our eggs to be submerged in that yummy, yummy deliciousness. So ideally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on high just for a minute. I'm going to put the lid on and just let that just, just sort of just all come together. Um, has anybody got any questions whilst we're waiting for that to happen just before I do the final bit where I add my eggs? Any questions or any anything? Any, when do we add garam masala? So the garam masala goes in at the very, very end. So once the dish is finished and complete and beautifully aromatic and, and just about to be served that's when your garam masala goes in so what garam masala does is it brings together everything you've put into that dish all of the flavors all the aromatics all of the spices it just brings it all together and as you're taking your dish to the table you get the magic from that garam masala just sort of floating through the atmosphere and you just get all of that deliciousness and the anticipation of that lovely dish coming your way did you make it What's that? Garam so my garam masala, yeah. So the garam masala I use is my garam masala. Um, and it's a blend that my mum taught me how to make. So it's every region, family, or, you know, group of people have their own sort of version. So my garam masala is the, the, the version that my mum taught me how to make. Yep. So this is coming up to temperature. And it should be bubbling and sizzling away in there. And then what I'm going to do is I pop those eggs in. I'll Johnny, show you how to finish it off. Johnny said, I'll just get the staff to do the rice and popper doms. You're so lucky you've got staff. I want to have staff. You have staff. You can wash her up with. <laughs> it's my daughter getting she cheeky. Getting, get, getting cheeky, I think. <laughs> I have staff. I have children. <laughs> okay. So this is... I'd take a very quick um, yeah. is there a, um, insta of that, a boomerang. Okay. So all of that's coming together. It's really lovely. It's all sort of, you've got a little bit of that separation happening, which is really important in a, in a good a masala. masala blog so if you go to the website, um, uh, or we'll, we'll put a link up as well. So the blog is called um, The Wonder Spice. And that blog tells you how I make my garam masala. Um, you can also order it from us, um, from the website, because I do packs of spices um, that are, are very important me and the ones that I, I really like so you can order it directly from us as well but there is a blog that shows you how to make it okay so my masala is looking good so it's quite liquidy in that you know it's not a thick paste or anything it's it's got a bit of liquid and a bit of moisture to it now this is the important bit not the important bit the fun bit so Naya yeah so once your masala is done, you then pop your eggs in. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no. She missed it. She missed the picture. <laughs> so I'm going to get all of that spice in. And 
and I'm going to just mix them all up and just coat them. Coat it with the masala sauce there. What region is your garden masala? Um, so I, my family are from the Punjab, from up in the north, um, and that's where a lot of my cooking style comes from. So ideally, what I would recommend you do is once you've put your eggs in there, just pop the lid on and let them sort of simmer away and come together for a good 10 minutes, which obviously I'm not going to hold on to you um, for any longer than I need to because it is Friday night and I know you're raring to get back to your families. Um, so once that's simmered away for about 10 minutes, what you then do is that's when you add your garam masala. How do you manage to wear a yellow top and not get it covered in sauce? Ta-da! Magic! I um, have done this for a very long time. So, a nice teaspoon of garam masala in there. Um, garam masala goes in. And that will just add such depth and aroma to that dish. Um, and then just give that a mix through and I will show you what the dish looks like. I'm going to move these bits just to the side here. Oh, and I'm just going to pop them in. Whoops. Now it should smell really, really quite aromatic and delicious and saucy and just yum. Now what I'm going to do is show you what the inside of that lovely, lovely egg looks like now. So obviously your sauce will be slightly thicker than this because you'll have let it cook down and let it cook through. So into that we're going to add a... Uh, mm, mm, mm. And I'm going to show you, I'm just going to cut through. One of the eggs, just so that you can see what it looks like. Just turn the so, can you see? Yeah. So there is your very, very delicious, very aromatic um, and special egg curry. So this is a dish from my childhood um, and I hope you really enjoy it because it is really quite special. Um, so there you go. There is the Friday Night Curry Club dinner for tonight done. Have we got any questions before I sign off? Do you think roti or rice? Is um, so it depends on what you like. I'm going to do it with rice just because I, I have mine a little bit more saucy and liquidy. Um, but roti will work so because you can just scoop up that amazing masala sauce in there. Um, and it works really, really well. So absolutely either will, will work. In fact, have both. Um, a little bit of rice and a little bit of bread is, is going to work. Any more questions before we... Debbie said, my friend here said this reminds her of an Ethiopian recipe. Ah. For a what? Onion and chicken stew with hard boiled eggs in it. Ah, amazing. I'd like to hear more about that dish. That sounds very interesting. Um, thank you for joining me tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for spending your Friday evening with me. Um, as always, I will ask you to take photos, take a picture of the dish that you've cooked tonight post it on the app, you can post it on Instagram, make sure you tag me in so that I can see it. Um, I would love to see what you've come up with and what you've created and any feedback is always welcome. Um, thank you for joining me, I hope you've had fun um, and I will see you next week I guess.